take back control of freedom, you too can work together to spread managed democracy with the gentle touch of an iron fist. Dispense peace with the ultimate weaponry of Super Earth. Enlist in the galaxy's most elite fighting force and become a legend. Would you like to know more? Welcome to Deep Thought Ball Gaming. I'm Chris Chappell. And today, we're signing away our lives to the great democratization in Helldivers 2. Since its release, the hit tongue-in-cheek shooter by Arrowhead Game Studios has taken the internet by storm and overwhelmed servers worldwide. Set in the distant Orwellian-inspired future, humanity has united under the unusual banner of managed democracy. As best described by their own government, managed democracy is a computer-aided voting system that has removed the uncertainty of older forms of civic engagement. Thankfully, now the computer system can determine what the people really want to vote for and ensure a healthy democracy by selecting the right outcome. That's not scary at all. On Super Earth, the masses are encouraged to show their civic spirit as a good citizen by joining the military as soon as possible. Any and all enemies that stand in the way of galactic liberty must be exterminated to ensure the safety and freedom of Super Earth. Any unwilling to take part in this galactic task of spreading managed democracy will be exter- I mean, re-educated by the Ministry of Truth. The story begins a full century after the victory of Super Earth against the terror of the socialist cyborgs, bugs, and illuminate. This time, the vile Terminid have escaped their confines as living oil resources for the government and have already successfully infested multiple planets. For the betterment of Super Earth, the foul creatures must be contained as soon as possible to stop their insidious spread across the galaxy. Yet a new enemy faction, the Automatons, have already appeared to initiate their campaign against democracy. Players take on the mantle of a Helldiver, a member of the elite frontline forces, the faceless ground troopers of Super Earth, as they drop into immense battlefields with ever narrowing chances of survival. With ACDC's Back in Black instinctually playing in your mind, hurling toward the surface, death will be a close companion from the moment your drop pod hits the ground until you die screaming liberty. In fact, more often than not, amidst the endless hordes of violent enemy forces, instead of the Terminids and Automatons, your squad mates will act as your own proverbial Grim Reaper made flesh. Thanks, Steve. In truth, Helldivers and the sacrificed citizenry of Super Earth at large have no true value to the government. None beyond their hollow and propagandized claims put forth by the Ministry of Truth in approved transmissions. Their endless ideological broadcasts can be found everywhere, planet-wide, to keep the placated and ignorant masses constantly fed controlled messaging via government media. I can already hear Alex Jones screaming somewhere. Despite being completely replaceable with another reinforcement drop from orbit, the Helldivers work bravely and endlessly to fight back the enemy hordes, to survive another day, and to do it all over again. The title's lore plays heavily off the willfully blind patriotism and saber-rattling of the Robert Heinlein novel and its cinematic counterpart, the immensely popular cult classic Starship Troopers. Despite the clear ties to such titles, Helldivers 2 finds a way to create a uniquely charming and campy style of its own. Arguably leaning ever further into the we're the good guys fallacy, Helldivers 2 encourages a sense of brotherhood and in-grouping in a way that pulls you in swiftly and doesn't let go to provide a rather illuminating look at humanity. The effects of extreme circumstances, an authoritarian and propagandized social order, and a call to action against a common enemy can easily sweep an individual citizen up and into actions devoid of logic when considered at a macro level. While many today like to virtuously claim that they would be on the right side of history, in a multitude of circumstances, such a modernist concept of the past is at best ignorant of the devious power of such immense influence on humanity and willfully blind to its obvious power today. Those who lived in Stalin's Soviet Union did not think themselves evil. They were caught up in the social order of the day. They were surrounded by propaganda, reaped 
fleeting benefits for their submission and were consistently shown that dissidents were not tolerated and purely selfish. The people were fed the ever-popular lie that their government's actions, no matter how horrifying, were for the greater good. That would never happen to us today though, right? Nope, nothing to see here. Under such psychological and social confines, and given a common enemy in others, social bonds can be strengthened in the short term, yet consistently at the detriment of those deemed to be the enemy or the problem. This othering and reinforced hatred and scapegoating, while effective at galvanizing many toward a goal, has led to the inhuman and atrocious treatment of others as seen in countless scenarios throughout history. For the greater good, as stated by the Polish philosopher and economist Jakub Wojdar Wisniewski, is the phrase that always precedes the greatest evil. He posits that when foul actions taken by the government are left unchecked, or even accepted by the populace as the ends justifying the means, such hideous actions of those in power will inherently lead to more actions of the same ilk. In truth, Helldivers 2 works as a perfect social example of this concept in action. The player is given minuscule amounts of information, encouraged to fight an enemy for little to no reason beyond the fact that they were told to do so, and they're thrust into situations they will likely not survive and left only with each other and their shallow sense of purpose to console them. Well, that and the knowledge that their new orbital blast upgrade is gonna look badass as it fries every bug in sight. From the constantly changing and interactive battlefield shared by every player online, building a sense of grandeur to the battles you are joining, to the ever-shifting local missions for you and your squad mates to overcome challenges within, it's easy to feel part of something bigger and want to achieve more. It's a powerful glimpse into the bonds that such circumstances can forge even between faceless strangers online. Granted, the insane explosions certainly help to keep things interesting. And in Helldivers 2, explosions are more commonplace than in a Michael Bay blockbuster and a hundred times more deadly. This is especially true when the explosives are arguably in the wrong hands. Thanks for calling down the orbital strike right next to the team again, Steve. But despite the countless critiques of obsessive group superiority complexes throughout history, and rightfully so, national pride can also be an extremely healthy outgrowth of selective and willful social groupings. Pride in one's home, family, community, and nation have led to impossible feats of amazing creation and discovery. It's led to the strength of societies and the rise of freedom against tyranny, and can be directly tied to some of the most wonderful advancements in human history. As William P. Jimenez and his colleagues discovered in their 2021 study, Do They See a Half-Full Water Cooler? Groups of optimistic individuals are actually more cohesive, better equipped to adapt and think creatively, and traditionally complete goals more efficiently. Patriotism, and more broadly speaking, the inherent optimism associated with it, has historically led individuals to be more engaged in their communities, increasingly driven and ambitious, and notably more cooperative. Amidst the endless deaths, hilarious friendly fire mistakes, and overwhelming odds, the same point can be seen in practice amongst the Helldiver community. Groups that lean into the concept are the ones that enjoy the game the most, as the game itself promotes a euphorically patriotic response as you and your team work together to overcome impossible odds. That said, however, total national subservience can be, and has been, incredibly deadly if taken to the extreme. When the government knows best and all evils are acceptable for the greater good, the people have drifted into dangerous territory. The sweeping effects of societal othering, through force or propaganda, often used by the likes of Stalin, Hitler, or Mao, can be seen in active application within the game's provided targets. The Terminids provide the more literal example of the insect bugs and animal slurs used to historically dehumanize one's enemies into lesser beings in need of being exterminated. Alternatively, the automatons are the perfect example of the soulless othering of one's enemies, their non-humanity a threat calling for destruction. These concepts have certainly been used for hundreds of years to allow for the barbaric destruction of life in countless authoritarian and fascist states throughout human history. And in numerous circumstances, the masses have followed along with the societal dictates and norms of their time under the immense governmental burdens of their own ignorant making. In truth, the never-ending balancing act between the national pride of the citizenry and their individualistic resilience to undeserving authority, rebellion if you will, is one of immense importance 
to the health and well-being of a nation. The lack or overabundance of either often leads to society's erosion. Swiftly, society can free fall into the abject horrors of the 20th century, or a complete and utter lack of cohesion, sense of duty, or camaraderie achieving only endless tribalism, infighting, and division. Being proud of who you are and where you came from, your family or country, is healthy and promotes an intentionally positive sense of hope. However, the blind observance of authority and the willful disregard of the individual to retain allegiance to the powerful can swiftly provide a glimpse into hell itself. If balance is achieved between the two extremes, patriotism can be an immense and indomitable force for good and something that should never be lost. In short, as best said by Mark Twain, patriotism is supporting your country all of the time and your government when it deserves it. Thank you for watching Deep Thoughts While Gaming. And remember to smash that like button like you smash an enemy of liberty. And hit that join button to become part of my loyal army of followers. Yes, you'll lose your individuality and personal agency, but you will get exclusive emojis, a Discord server, live streams, and videos. And if you like morally questionable combat, check out this video about Pal Worlds, Pokemon with guns.